so I will be talking about entanglement entropy and holography and, uh, and, and let me sort of begin with an introduction uh, to this topic. Uh, so entanglement entropy, I will define this uh, subsequently, uh, it's uh, emerging as a useful uh, observable in, uh, char to characterize quantum systems. So let me just give its uses uh, before I sort of, you know, uh, define it so that you get a sort of flavor of it. So it characterizes certain degree, the degrees of freedom, uh, you know, uh, of a quantum field theory at a critical point. It serves as one of the best methods uh, to uh, determine something called the central charge, um, and a central charge uh, of a conformal field theory uh, in numerical calculations. Uh, it can be used to characterize if a system has a Fermi surface or not. Uh, it can be used as an order parameter for certain quantum phase transitions. Uh, these are phase transitions say, at zero temperature. Um, the time dependence of the entanglement entropy can be used to characterize thermalization in quantum field theories. Uh, so, I know, it has a particular behavior when you quench the system. Uh, we might come, we will, I mean, I will de describe this a little bit in more detail later. And uh, it plays an important role in understanding holography and quantum gravity. And this, this topic I will focus on uh, uh, eventually uh, in this uh, small talk. Uh, now let me define this entanglement entropy. Um, so you consider a quantum mechanical system, uh, say it's in a pure state, and there is a quantity called density matrix, which is essentially the outer product of the, you know, the bra and the ket. So it's something like a psi psi. Now uh, suppose you have the system uh, of Hilbert spaces, uh, of the quantum mechanical system, and uh, you say divide it into two disjoint sets. Mm -hmm. I will give an example soon. Uh, say it's called A and B. Mm -hmm. And then you write the wave function uh, as a linear combination of uh, the, you know, the uh, complete sets uh, A and complete sets B. I mean, you separate the complete sets. So here is an example. Uh, so uh, this is the basis of Hilbert space for a two spin system, so uh, it's up, up, down, down, or down, up, and so on. So this is a simple basis for a Hilbert space of describing two spins, and the density matrix, uh, and this A and B, you can think of them either as up or down, and so on. So A is for the first spin, and B is for the second, and the density matrix, if you just take a linear combination of all of these, will be of this form. So it has, uh, sort of, roughly speaking, two indices. Uh, uh, so I'm trying to, uh, you know, divide the Hilbert space into two parts, the red and the green. So uh, the matrix elements form this, and what you do uh, is define something called the reduced density matrix, uh, uh, in which you, what you do is you sum over the degrees of freedom of B. So you sum over B, and the entanglement entropy is defined uh, using the reduced density matrix as the von Neumann entropy. Uh, given by this expression, uh, Fe is equal to trace rho A log rho A. Now, uh, let me go over to this uh, two-spin example a little bit more. So, for instance, uh, here's an example, uh, a linear combination of this kind, up, down, and down, up. And if you construct the psi psi, you will get a four cross four matrix of this kind. Uh, and uh, tracing over the green second spin, you will get reduced density matrix for the first spin. Uh, so, uh, and if you construct uh, uh, the entanglement entropy, you will get an expression like this, you know, just the formula of the entanglement. And it is maximized, uh, it's just a mathematical function, and you can find out uh, when it's maximized. Uh, it's maximized when the original state is of this form, up, down, and down, up. So this is sort of the maximal entangled state for at least for these two spins. And it cannot, you can see that it cannot be factorized. So that's the, sort of the, where the name comes from. It cannot be factorized. It's entangled, the two spins. And uh, for instance, it's minimized when it's like just up and down. It's a tensor product of the two spins. So this state can be factorized. So entanglement entropy, roughly speaking, from this simple example, we realize that it is, it is, you know, it arises when the knowledge of the subsystem is ignored. Like you are tracing over this uh, B, this, uh, and then you don't know the knowledge of that, and uh, that's where the entropy arises from. And that's the reason you can see that here, for instance, in the, you know, the other system can be up or down, and that's the reason it's sort of the maximally entangled state. 
Now, in quantum field theory, so that's a quantum mechanical system. In quantum field theory, is what you would like to do to, uh, for entanglement, what you would do generally is divide the spatial slice. Okay, I mean, uh, so basically you take a time slice of the system and it's a spatial region. Say here I'm talking about a system which is a two-dimensional spatial slice. And then you pick up a region, say a region A, and then you trace over the B, region B, and you ask the question of the entanglement entropy of that uh, uh, system. So that's uh, generally what you do in a quantum field theory uh, for uh, you know studying entanglement entropy. And uh, a system which we'll focus on is the one plus one dimensions itself. And here the spatial uh, uh, spatial region is just a line. Uh, you know, it's just a line, one plus one dimension, and uh, the region, sub-regions can be chosen to be intervals. Uh, here is a single interval of size L. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, roughly speaking, if you think about the definition a little bit, if you take the whole system, then it's usually the entanglement entropy reduces to the full Boltzmann entropy, because it's the full density matrix. And if it's pure, of course, then, you know, uh, it's a pure state, the value is zero. And if the thermal state is equal to the thermal entropy, so there's some properties which I'm saying. Now, how do you evaluate this? I've given an example for this two-spin system, but how do you do it for, you know, for instance, in the quantum field theory? And the convenient method uh, is actually to, you know, use this identity. This is actually a mathematical identity. Uh, you take uh, powers of the density matrix and you take uh, uh, take uh, n powers of the density matrix and uh, can compute this quantity and take n equals 1. So mathematically you can show that this reduces to the one Norman entropy. But then this powers of the density matrix, uh, if you want to evaluate that, actually that's done using something called the replica trick. Uh, and this trick basically, uh, you know, this powers of the density matrix uh, essentially reduces to studying the quantum field theory on, uh, you know, complicated surfaces, actually. So uh, it, it itself in a, is a rich topic. And uh, so by just, you know, this, this thing of, you know, taking, uh, studying the, uh, 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 studying the entanglement of your led to studying quantum field theory on a very complicated surface. And for instance, in this one plus one dimensional system, and you have this interval, what you have to do is basically take n copies of the same system and somehow connect it along the interval and you have to study the partition functions of the theory in that in that particular surface and here's a picture of that so you have, here are the three is the three copies uh, three copies of of this plane so plane this is the line this is the spatial line and uh, the one which is going inside in the plane is the time so uh, and you join these things uh, and you study the partition function of the theory in this particular complicated surface. Now, there are other techniques, but, uh, you know, uh, but this, uh, but usually, as you saw, you know, is just this idea of evaluating them, uh, it's pretty hard, actually, to evaluate, and very few exact results are known. And most, many of the exact results are known in one-dimensional, lower-dimensional systems. Okay, and certain special higher-dimensional systems. Now, experimentally, as this, Quote one, uh, it has been, I mean, the second Rene entropy, uh, like rho a to the square, that has been studied, uh, I think, uh, using quantum, uh, this cold, uh, cold atom systems. Um, uh, very recently, uh, actually, uh, 2015, and I have not seen the developments after that, but this is what I know of. Uh, so, but our interest is actually how this quantity uh, is helping us understand holography. Now, that's what I'll come to, and I'll focus on the case of D equals 1, but of course, this is, discussion is there for higher dimensions, but I'll focus on the case D equals 1. Now, uh, and first I'll present some results which are known. Uh, consider 1 plus 1 dimensional conformability. These are theories that are at a critical point, and they have a particular uh, characteristic called the central charge, which is basically the degrees of freedom of the theory. And if you look at the same problem again, a single interval uh, uh, on the spatial slice, and ask what is the entanglement entropy, there's a formula. Uh, it's actually proportional to the central charge of the theory uh, and grows logarithmically with the length delta. Okay, here I've called it L, but it's delta. Okay, it grows logarithmically with, uh, with, L, uh, with the length, and it's proportional to the central charge. Now, and if you put it on a circle, uh, 
it has acquired the periodicity of the circle. You see the sign of the periodicity coming up. But the same C by 3 uh, comes in. And if you put it at, if you heat the system, uh, and again you are on the spatial line, uh, it, it, it acquires the temperature dependence of this kind, uh, sine hyperbolic, a characteristic temperature dependence. Okay. So these are some exact results. Now, uh, and there are similar expressions for the Rene entropy of this kind. Uh, but, and you see from these results that uh, it's very universal. I mean, you know, it just has the information of the central charge. Now, in this respect, actually, the entanglement entropy does not provide very much new information. Uh, it is very similar to the Cardi or the Stefan Boltzmann formula in which, you know, in this, in one dimension, it actually grows as the temperature and the proportional day constant is the central charge. It gives the information of the central charge. Now, uh, but let us think about the simple results further. Now, since it's universal, okay, and, uh, you know, there is this thing about holography, somehow some quantum field theories are described by gravity, uh, they, we should be able to reproduce this, you know, result in holography. And there's a very simple geometric proposal to evaluate this entanglement entropy, not as complicated as this, you know, as this replica trick in which you see many copies of the field theory together. Uh, so uh, holography is a duality, it's much like very strong, strong duality in physics. It relates, uh, but it's, a, it's sort of a novel duality, it relates theories which are living in, say, one dimensions in this case, uh, one plus one dimension, time included, to theories which are living, gravitational theories which are living in a higher dimension, one higher dimension. So in this case, it will be two plus one dimensional theory. I'll have a picture soon of this. So here's the picture. And imagine that your, your, your field theory or conformal field theory is lying on the circuit. So it's this periodic, periodic case we are focusing on. And this is the time. So, uh, so the field theory is on this outer surface of the cylinder, okay, and uh, the gravitational theory is described by filling up that cylinder, and the filling up slices are actually hyperboloids, okay, they're hyperboloids, uh, and that space is a particular name, it's called antidiscital space, so you fill up that cylinder with hyperboloids. Um, and there is a way to describe the distances measured in that space, and, and, and that's given by this metric. So this is the time and this is the angle, the, the, the angle, the ring uh, on the conformal field. This is the spatial, uh, spatial direction, the theta is the spatial direction and this is the time. And a rho is the thing which goes into the interior, which fills up, fills up. And oh, what is the peculiarity about this duality is that it relates very quantum objects like, some, uh, like correlation functions or even entanglement entropy, you will see that soon, to very classical objects in gravity. And so what's the prescription of evaluating entanglement entropy? It's here. So we are looking at a constant time slice. So the theory is on the ring. And here is the interval. This red one is the interval, which we were focusing on. And what you have to do, uh, the prescription says that you, you take these endpoints and draw the shortest length going into the interior, okay, shortest length, uh, uh, you know, which connects these two points from the interior. And, uh, you know, that's called the geodesic. Uh, so again, I've described that in slightly more equations. So you take the time slice, so you drop this red. So this is uh, the hyperboloid, okay? And you take these two points, P and Q, this P and Q, uh, and find the shortest length between them. And, uh, and then you, you evaluate, uh, use a formula very similar to the Hawking, Hawking Beckenstein formula which is 1 over 4 G Newton, and in this particular case, it's 3 Newtons, three-dimensional Newtons, because of space is gravity in three dimension, and the geodesic length, the shortest length between these two points. Uh, and here is the working out of that formula, um, and, and what you do once you work out that formula, uh, and use a relation between the Newton's constant and the central charge, which is known in holography, uh, you get that C by 3 log of the periodic function because we are looking at the configuration on the circle now. So we get exactly that same formula which was evaluated uh, using field theoretic techniques, the replica trick basically. So, uh, so uh, you know, it reproduces that, uh, that result and there are other properties it satisfies, but the thing which I want you to take home is that, you know, it was a very quantum calculation, evaluating partition functions on these replica surfaces and so on, but here it's very geometric, it's just, just that, 
you know, length of that, you know, geodesic between those two points in this gravity. Now, this connection, okay, I've given this very particular example, and it seems very, uh, you know, very tenuous. And it seems, okay, I've given one quantity and, you know, uh, you're evaluating these lengths, and somehow it seems very, uh, very tenuous. But actually pursuing this connection a little bit more deeper, and you can, you can do two things. You can actually understand the holography mode, and you can also understand, I mean, you know, find new quantities, new universal quantities, uh, in the field theory itself, and that's what uh, I want to present. Okay, so what is the technique of doing that? Uh, so of course we have to go to a more richer structure. We cannot just work with the C by three. So how do you get more information from the conformal field theory? And this information should have much more detailed properties. It should have more C by just not the central charge. And but still it should have some universality because you want to say it for you know you want to give general results. Uh, and it will, it should also enable us to check this against these geometric proposals. So it will check whether these geometric proposals are right. You know, okay, the, the, the result which I presented was, you know, it didn't have much structure uh, and how to go beyond that. Uh, so, uh, you know, the strategy was to look for corrections, uh, situations in which there are corrections to the single interval entropy, uh, evaluate them precisely in the CFT, and you know if which and you know look for universal uh, universal corrections and and then you you, you sort of test this proposal uh, using the geometric uh, ideas of evaluating entanglement entropy and uh, so here's the situation which we sort of which I want to present so that it gives you a flavor of the uh, of the things involved uh, so you, you create an excitation in the conformal field theory uh, it's uh, held at finite temperature. And uh, the excitation is created by inserting a local operator uh, at say t equal to zero at x equal to zero. Now let me give you a picture. So here it is. Uh, so this is the line. Uh, the, the interval is on the L1 and L2. It's between L1 and L2. The interval in which we are evaluating the entanglement entropy for which you know you had this answer c by three log of uh, sine uh, the length. Um, and so now we create this excitation uh, at say here. And then, uh, you know, you let it evolve. And since it's a conformal field theory and there's no scales in the problem, uh, it evolves on the light cone. Okay, it evolves in the TX light cone. So here is the, the, the pulse moves in. Uh, the, so the pulse moves in and, uh, you know, and it sort of hits the, hits the interval. So once it hits the interval, and you would imagine, just physically you would imagine that, you know, the C by 3 log, that formula should change because there's something coming in there's some quantum excitation coming in and it should change. Okay, and sure enough, it does change. Uh, and in fact, it acquires time dependence because the pulse is moving in. Okay, uh, uh, so, uh, so that's the picture uh, and it acquires time dependence. And now let's look at it. So here is the C by three, uh, you know, that uh, sign uh, because it's a finite temperature, it's sine hyperbolic by delta beta. And then there is this correction. Now, we had this parameter, the width of the pulse. So we can perform an expansion in the width of the pulse. Uh, so here's the expansion. So the, there is a jump. Once the pulse gets in, there is a jump, sudden jump. Uh, and that jump uh, was calculated earlier, actually. Yeah, it was calculated. And it has, it, it has a characteristic, uh, it is a particular characteristic of that, uh, you know, that operator which is creating that pulse. It, it has some dependence of the operator of the, creating, so, of the pulse. So there's a jump. Uh, so let's keep that picture in mind. So there is this jump, this dotted, dotted line. Hmm? Okay, there's a jump. But but uh, you know, but the pulse at the width. So let's see what are the other dependents. At the linear order, we can show that it is zero. There's no correction. But at the quadratic order, okay, there is a time dependent. So the, the linear term vanishes, and the time dependence has this first. The first non-trivial correction is there at the second, uh, you know, epsilon squared in the width. Uh, and 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 this uh, this epsilon squared is universal for all conformal field theories. I mean, there's a prefactor which just depends on the dimension of the operator, but it's universal for all conformal field theories. And here is the function. It's a very simple function. Uh, it's a function like this. Okay, and uh, and it can be trusted in certain domains. So let but let me give it in, in a picture. Okay, uh, so let's go back to the picture. Uh, yeah, so here, so I have plotted this blue one in which, you know, an exact calculation could be done. You see that there's this horn, okay, so that's how it actually behaves. So for the, the second entropy is what I've done. 
Uh, and this is uh, the horn, this is the actual, the blue one is the actual, you know, exact calculation in which an exact calculation could be done. Now, the first jump is this, just the square. And here's the epsilon squared correction. You see how it hugs, this is the epsilon squared correction, uh, you know, correction to this. And it sort of, it comes very close to the uh, actual value. And this, this rise and the dip is actually universal and it's universal across all kinds of formal field theories. And uh, that's one of the things. So, so this is the sort of problems uh, which I said is, you know, which, you, which comes about when you study this quantity more. And you get a result which you can, you can say for, you know, study, uh, for conformal field theories. But in particular, uh, once you have this result, you can actually go back and see what it corresponds to in gravity. And it's quite, a, uh, quite an interesting phenomenon, actually. This pulse, I, I, I just can say it in words, the pulse actually is, is, is you know, dual to something which is like a falling particle in the background of a black hole. The black hole comes in because there is finite temperature in the conformal field theory. And, uh, you know, uh, and evaluating entanglement entropy, you have to generalize the original formula of the geodesic to time-dependent situation, which was known. And what, hello? Sorry. You, uh, can we please close soon because we yeah, are yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so there is this uh, geometric proposal and the excellent squared correction. When you do, uh, it shows precise agreement with the field theory results. There are other situations similar to this in which you know you set up certain things for the corrections and you ask for universal quantities and you look against holography, which. Uh, so the geometric proposal also is refined by by studying this question. So let me just conclude. Uh, so uh, I hope you have convinced, uh, sort of convinced you that uh, it's a useful observable to study in quantum field theory. Uh, it has been a driving factor to opt, op, you know, obtain universal results, and it's useful to study holography. Actually, I have not I didn't go into very much of that, but it is useful to study that. And I just said the geometric proposals need to be refined when different situations are considered. And um, and you can see the geometric proposals are very simple uh, compared to the you know complicated uh, replica trick, and uh, and and hopefully there are more lessons to be learned from holography and entanglement. Yeah, so that that's sort of uh, uh, my yeah, presentation. Thank you.